Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to episode 5 of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a good day. We are going to do some work around here after our little mining trip proved so successful in the last episode. I think now that we have gotten ourselves some riches here, it is time to act like it. It is time to, to upgrade our house to something that is a little bit more livable. But first off, we need to deposit all of the stuff we got from mining the other day into a chest in here so it can keep nice and safe. So we're going to keep the diamonds in here for the moment. We're going to have a lot of in important stuff to do with those later. We have the lapis and the redstone in here as well. And you'll notice we picked up some gold and iron ore. So gold ore can be smelted just like iron. So you need to pop it in here with a piece of coal and it will slowly convert into ingots. We'll put the rest of the iron in there and that will be pretty useful for us as well. But for now, the gold ingots we grabbed can also go in this chest and we'll probably have to rearrange a couple of things here. Let's take the oak leaves out and I will take those outside because out here I have set up a little chest that we're going to use for the building supplies for renovating our home here. So I'm going to drop the oak and birch leaves in there and probably go to sleep because the sun is setting and I don't really want to be disturbed by monsters while I'm building. So let me hop into a bed here when the uh, sun fully sets and we'll get started with the new day and with our house design. Good morning everyone, and gosh it is hard to sleep with all of these noisy animals next door, <laughs> but hopefully we will be able to move them into some slightly better accommodation soon. I am going to go through and shear the sheep. By the way, you can walk on the top of fence posts, but you'll notice there's a little bit of a, a step up here. Fence posts are actually, technically speaking, a block and a half high, even if they only look like they're one block high, and that actually helps keep the animals in because otherwise they would just be able to walk up over blocks the same way they do when they're walking around the landscape. So if you're careful, you can walk, you can kind of do a tightrope walk around the edge of the fence, or you can just jump right in and start shearing anything and everything that you see in front of you. Of course, that means that it's going to be a little bit tricky pushing through all these animals to get to the fence gate here, and we want to open that without letting any of them out, but we nailed it. Good job, us. <laughs> there we go. All right, now let's hop over here. We'll add the wool to the build chest I've got over here, and I find that when I'm building stuff, in Minecraft, I tend to separate some stuff out into a build chest before I start a build, just so I can keep track of how many resources I've got here and how many I'm using and maybe keep a little bit left over in case I need them later. So we'll pop the saplings and stuff in here. Ideally, we want to clear out as much of our inventory as possible here so that we have plenty of room for all of the blocks we're going to be using for our building. You know what? I might even take a couple of planks of this wood here uh, or maybe the the tree that's over there. Let's take let's take a couple of logs from this because that tree looks quite big and might be a bit of a pain to chop down with all the logs that are up there in the branches. It's going to take a lot of jumping around. So I'm going to create another chest here, like so, and we're going to use this to store some other stuff. I might as well just pop this on top of the previous chest because I don't really have a great deal of room in this house. But that is something we're going to be remedying when we build our new lodgings. So maybe we'll put the precious items in here thinking about it. We've got the diamonds, the redstone, the lapis lazuli, the gold and the iron in there. And there are other precious resources that we'll acquire in the world so it usually helps to have a little bit of space left over for when we get those. So the saddle maybe could go in here as well potentially. That should be fine and let's make a few torches just so we clear those sticks out of our inventory. We won't need the hoe so we could probably put that somewhere in here. Let's put that in there. There we go. Okay. Nice clear inventory means a clear head and you can uh, you can think a little bit more about what you're going to build. So we're probably going to take down the little wooden shack, sentimental though it has become. I get a little bit attached to these early builds but it's time for it to go. And you don't need to worry too much about removing your shelter once you've got a safe place to sleep because Ultimately, you can sleep in a bed regardless of whether or not it's surrounded by a house. You don't have to worry about being completely enclosed. It just sort of helps in those early days to have a shelter you can retreat to at nighttime, especially if you haven't made a bed yet. But in theory, you can sleep out in, a, in the open as long as night has started to fall and as long as there are no monsters around. If there are monsters nearby, there will be a message that says you can't sleep because there are monsters nearby and it will prevent you from using the bed. And that's usually a precaution just to make sure that monsters don't attack you while you're trying to sleep. But 
it can also be a little bit annoying if, you're, uh, if your bed is too close. Say if there's a zombie like on the other side of the wall here, you'll end up uh, not being able to sleep. So you have to go and take care of the zombie first. There we go. We've gotten rid of the roof. <laughs> All that's left is to dismantle the walls here. And we are going to leave this wall here up just because right now it's keeping in all the cows and sheep. And if we remove this wall, then they're just going to hop straight over this block and uh, they'll be able to get out of the pen, which is not what we want right now. So that's going to be a, a sort of semi semi-permanent wall over there until I decide to reorganize where the cows and the sheep are standing. So hopefully we don't remove any important blocks there. Fantastic. Let's take the door out and let's keep the, uh, the entrance to our little mine down there because there's another cave down there that I do want to explore a little further just to see if there's any more valuable resources we can grab down here. So here we go. We're starting again with a blank slate. We can probably get rid of some of this grass. A tip that somebody left in the comments a couple of episodes ago is that if you've got a bucket of water and you want to remove a bunch of grass from a flat area, you can actually put the bucket of water down like so, and it will clear out the grass in a kind of uh, and in eight blocks in each direction and then the kind of diagonals that connect those up. So you get a kind of diamond shape right here that's already cleared out. You can't really do that on blocks that are kind of on landscape that is blocky like this because the water will just find the, the quickest place to run down from. And a lot of the time that means it just runs into these little kind of gullies and stuff in the terrain and it's not always going to go exactly where you want. So say I wanted to clear out this grass block here. If I place the water there, it's just going to run that way because it's finding the shortest path to go down. So yeah, we're going to have to uh, take out that grass manually if we want to. But that also gathers us some seeds as well so we could replant those for our wheat field, which is still doing pretty well over there. As far as sources of food go, we're pretty we're pretty well set up. We still have a bunch of steak from the last mining expedition and stuff, so we don't need to worry too much about how much we're sprinting around and jumping around while we're building stuff. So the stuff that it's easiest to build with uh, right at the start is the most easily acquirable resources, things like cobblestone, oak logs, and maybe even some andesite and granite, some of the, uh, the stuff that you've gathered whilst you've been caving. I've also got some wool in here from the sheep because we want to make this a kind of medieval looking home, I suppose. But you can really build in whatever style you want as long as you've got the imagination for it. So today we're going to build our home out of oak logs, cobblestone, maybe a little bit of andesite, maybe some smooth stone as well and some white wool. Those are gonna be our starting blocks. And we've got some oak planks as well. We could break these trees down into more planks if we wanted to. And as we go further afield, we'll start to acquire different types of wood. We might even find some spruce wood or some jungle wood we can use. But this isn't going to be our only build in the series because we will need to build houses and other buildings elsewhere. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be an interesting challenge seeing what we can find in the world and what we can come up with later. We've still got a couple of doors left over from where I made the doors for the, the original wooden shack. So it seems like we've got a decent amount of resources and we can probably start building. I want to build far enough away from this tree that the tree is not going to get in the way. So I think maybe we'll start around here. This this area seems like a, a, nice, a nice little area to start building. I'm going to start by framing out the build with oak logs. It usually helps to plan out things a little bit beforehand. You might even want to go into a separate world in creative mode and, and try and draft a couple of designs for your house, take screenshots of them, and then return to your survival world to build it if you feel like doing that. But for now, we're going to sort of freestyle this in survival. I tend to do this with a lot of my builds, but that's because I've been building for a while. So your mileage may vary on that score. So what I'm going to do is build in kind of sort of three by three or five by five sections. It's usually nice to have an odd number between blocks in Minecraft because, for example, if you're building something with a doorway, you probably only want to have one door unless you want to put a double door in it and the door is going to sit evenly between these two pillars. So, for example, if we build up around the door frame here with cobblestone, like so, like this, then uh, then the door sits nice and squarely in the middle of those. And right now it's sticking outwards, which is a little bit weird, but we'll uh, we'll reorient that as we go. But yeah, this is this is kind of the the template for our build, and we're going to repeat this sort of pattern over and over again to make an interesting looking house here. So we're going to count one, two, three over. We're going to build another wooden pillar there. You get the idea. We're sort of building in in these little kind of three block odd numbered sections like so. And you'll find a lot of people in Minecraft like to build with odd numbers in mind like that. They also make for pretty interesting windows like here. If we uh, if we find ourselves some, some sand from the nearby area, we can start to cook some glass, which will be good for windows as well. 
And usually you can find sand anywhere there's water. So if there's a beach nearby, if there's an ocean, if there's a lake like this or a river or something like that, you will typically find sand at the bottom of any kind of watery area or around the edges. So it's nice and easy to find that. And we can turn that into glass in a furnace the same way you cook up iron ingots or basically anything else. Our gold has smelted and you hear the lovely ringing of experience in our ears. I'll tell you a little bit more about what experience is for later when we get to enchanting and tools and that kind of stuff. But for now, just look at that little experience bar, the little green bar at the bottom there growing and think that's going to be saved up for something, something special later on. Let's pop a couple of sand in there. We're going to cook 16 sand with two pieces of coal so that makes it nice and fuel efficient. And we're going to start building windows and stuff in these little frames. So for now we can leave gaps for those while that's cooking and we can jump and pillar up here to build a little bit more around our door frame. I haven't really covered that in previous episodes, but it is possible to place a block underneath yourself when you're uh, navigating around the Minecraft world. When you jump, if you right click, when you reach the kind of peak of your jump, you can easily place a block underneath yourself. It's not that hard to do, you can give it a, give it a try. And that is kind of an essential skill for Minecraft, not just for building, but for getting around in caves as well. Because imagine you're at the bottom of a big ravine, like the one we discovered in the last episode, and you need to get up to the top. All you need to do is jump, and right click as you jump and you can place blocks underneath you. You can do this on any version of Minecraft, it's not just the ones with keyboard and mouse, so give it a try, it's definitely worth a go. So I'm going to make a few different blocks here. I'm gonna make some stairs, I'm gonna make some cobblestone stairs like so, and those can kind of be used to frame out the entrance of our little house here. So for example, I can put uh, a, a stair this way up like so, and then the door could go underneath here and then it looked like there's a little kind of porch roof sort of thing. Alternatively, if you want to look at if you look at the top half of the block like so, you can place the stairs inverted. You can place them upside down. And so if I just do something simple like that, two stairs either side of that and then one inverted above it, it kind of makes a neat little porch. And I think that looks good. I think that's a good look for our little house here. So we're going to have a door in there with a, a porch surrounding it. We might even put some stairs almost look like, looking like they support the wall down here, but that, that can be used in elsewhere. That can be used for, for maybe the surround of the windows or something like that. Okay, it's getting dark, so let's hop into bed. And as you'll see, there are no monsters spawning right now, and it's possible to sleep completely out in the open with the open sky above us. And thankfully, we've gotten into bed fast enough that it doesn't look like any monsters have spawned in our immediate surroundings. So we don't need to worry about creepers coming up and disturbing us as we do our building. We can just keep going with what we've got here. So let's build some cobblestone stairs there, and then we'll probably build some oak logs over the top here as part of the frame. I've actually done a lot of tree farming off camera in between episodes so that we have enough wood to build a nice frame around this house because it's usually nice to have a mixture of blocks in a house, and I'm building this one mostly out of oak logs like so. But I think this is going to look really good once we're done with it. I think that's gonna look really sweet. Look at that. That's that's pretty cool looking so far. We do need to do a little bit of work around here just to make this look a little bit more in position. How about that? That's not too bad. I think that will do for now. And then we'll we'll work on this a little bit more to make it look even better in a second. It looks like our glass has finished smelting, you can tell because the furnace has turned off there. And glass can be dyed in a bunch of different colors. It, it uh, starts off in block form, but it can also be transformed into panes by putting six glass, uh, glass blocks in there like that, and you get 16 glass panes for that. So glass panes are an, a single pixel wide, as far as, or, or two pixels wide rather, as far as placing them on a block goes, but you can kind of put them halfway through a block like that, and it looks like a really nice little inset window. I want this wall to be a little bit longer, so I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then pop a block down there, so we have a nice odd number on this wall as well. I'm gonna hop down here, take a little bit of fall damage, but then we can fill in all of the blocks along here, like so, and we have a nice seven block long wall here, and that's gonna go right on this corner next to the window, and this should hopefully come out looking like quite a nice wall. There we go. And, and cobblestone in large quantities does look quite nice on its own, but you can always choose to vary up the texture of things a little bit by throwing in maybe some andesite or something like that. Fantastic, okay, so I think that's a wall with a little bit more character. <laughs> maybe we'll put one more block of it up here, so you can see that from the front of the house as well, like so. And you'll see that the glass panes still connect to it and everything, so that's that's looking swell. That's looking really nice. 
I think we're gonna have another three block long wall here. Maybe we'll put another window in here like so. And glass panes can be placed when there are no blocks surrounding them, but they do tend to, uh, if they're not connected to anything, they tend to look a little thin. So it's sometimes nice to just build the window frame first and then connect them all up like so. Oh dear, I've run out of cobblestone. <laughs> Let me grab that block there that I misplaced. And then let's hop down and get some more. There we go, grab that out of here finish off this frame and then put another pillar on this side here like so. All we've got to do is pillar up like that and this is looking pretty good so far. I think I'll probably bring this wall out another few blocks on this side so it will we'll mirror the window frame that we had on the other side. How about that? So we can have a nice symmetrical looking front to our house. We'll pop that up there like so and then fill in the window frame again with glass. And then I think all we'll really need to do, we can probably make this sort of symmetrical so we can uh, we can mirror this wall on the opposite side. But maybe for a bit of variation, what we'll do once we put this pillar in here, like so, maybe what we'll do is we'll go one, two, three out. We'll put another window here and we'll do it kind of the opposite way around. So we'll put this part here and we'll put that part on the other side because the wall is still going to be the same length if we do that. And this also means that this corner can just be a nice bright corner letting in lots of light with the two windows there on the side. Okay, let's let's pop in another pillar here. Let's do this like so. And we can always connect these pillars with the oak wood again, but you can see now why I've chopped down quite so many trees in order to make this house because there's going to be a lot of a lot of oak logs going into this and we we're not even breaking them down into planks which would give us four whole blocks. So you may want to uh, you may want to just break everything down into planks instead and build with planks instead of logs. It's really up to you. You don't need to copy this house design if you've got a design that you've seen online that you want to build or something that you can come up with from your own imagination. That will be absolutely fine. I'm going to eat a little bit of food, by the way, because I keep taking fall damage. And all of this jumping around is uh, reducing my hunger bar a little bit. It's, it's wearing down the hunger bar. So it will be important to make sure we don't take too much damage. We don't want to end up dying right here just by falling off the house as we're building it. Okie doke. I've worked in a little bit of andesite as we built there. And that's not looking too bad at all. I think that's looking really nice. So I think ultimately what we can do is close off this wall on this side. And this house is going to have a second floor as well, which is why we've got all of the wall blocks because I plan to build with those. But you know what? I think right at the back here, we're going to have a pillar, say there, and we'll continue these walls along here, along the side, maybe put a couple of back windows in, maybe even a back entrance as well. So we can put that right at the back here so that we can get out if we need to, if, in case we need to make a, a hasty exit out the back. So let's grab one of the doors that we have in here. Let's grab that and we'll pop it down, maybe inset into this wall like so. How about that? Yeah, so <laughs> we can we can place a few blocks around that to make a quick little door frame. Maybe we'll swap that one out for a cobblestone stair again, like so. We can pop that in there, fantastic stuff. And then we can just close off the top of this frame. We'll keep with the pillar going up here. And there we go, we've run out of our first stack of oak logs already making this place. This is gonna lead, need quite a lot of wood. But the best thing about wood is that you can just farm it from trees. It, it literally grows on trees. So you can grab as much wood as you need anytime you like, really. So around the outside of the house, we're going to continue what we've done here with the cobblestone stairs, just putting two either side of the bottom part of this window frame. And that's going to mean that the walls of the house look nice and supported. It's gonna give it a very solid feel. And right now I can teach you an extra trick that I use quite a lot when I'm building stuff. So say for example, I know I've got some cobblestone stairs here in my inventory, but I don't want to open up my inventory and click them into my hotbar because sometimes it just interrupts your flow as you're building a little bit. This is a, a secret trick that I, I use quite a lot. If you look at a block that you've got in your inventory but isn't in your hotbar and you middle click with your mouse, so if you've got a scroll wheel, you can click down on the scroll wheel, it will actually move them into the slot of your hotbar that you currently have highlighted. So if I have a, a thing empty there on like slot number seven in my hotbar, if I middle click, it gets pulled out of my inventory into my hotbar and I can use those right away. And you can swap around in your hotbar by looking at a block that you want to use and then middle clicking any time. It, it's really, really useful. It does save a lot of time when you're building. And I know a lot of the time I use that so often that I will run over to something that's over here. <laughs> I will end up running over to a completely different block just so I can middle click it and not have to open my inventory. It's it's kind of a matter of preference, really. It's something that you don't have to do if you don't want to. But personally, I just find it really, really nice to be able to do that. It's very convenient a lot of the time. 
So we'll pop a couple of cobblestone stairs around here. We'll leave the rest of the walls kind of flat for now, but maybe we'll come up with something else along those. And now we're going to go around the build and we're going to connect up the rest of these pillars here with our logs, like so. And then we'll start working on the upstairs floor in just a second. Here we are, my friends. This is starting to look like a really nice house now. It's definitely got some character to it, which is really what we want. So I'm going to start breaking down some of these planks into stairs like so. We'll get maybe, yeah, let's go with 32 of those. Let's go with half a stack of those. And we're going to put stairs on every kind of cross beam section here at every kind of intersection between these blocks so that we can start building up the next floor on top of these stairs like so. So we're going to pop those along there. We're going to take out this pillar that I jumped down from earlier. Let's take that away. And then let's keep going around with these oak stairs. So there we go. We've got stairs on each of the corners. Let's grab some wool out of here. Oh, we've already got some in our inventory. Very good. I didn't realize I'd picked that up earlier. Right, let's hop up here with the cobblestone. And let's make a quick jump to one of these stairs. And on top of each of these stair blocks, we can put another wooden pillar with the logs like so. And we can keep going around the outside of this building, making maybe four block tall pillars. I think that should work. I think that will work pretty well. We'll build those up so they're four blocks high each time. And hopefully we should have enough wood to finish this off. This is looking very ambitious right now, but if you've farmed enough wood, you should be able to build along with me. And with that, we have framed out the upper floor of our house. It's looking pretty good so far. It's really starting to come together. And using our little staircase on the inside, I'm going to hop up back to the second floor. And in between these wooden pillars we've got up here, we can start to place like flat panels of wool like so. Some of these you might even want to put windows in, and I think we'll put a window in this central one here right above the door like so. Let's get our glass panes back out. Let's build a couple of those on top of each other. You have to be very careful when you're clicking on them when they are thin like that, but then we should be able to build all the way around there like so. And this is a great reason to shear a bunch of sheep very early because white wool is a really nice block to build these kind of medieval buildings out of. It's uh, It's got a lot of, a lot of character, a lot of style, and it's gonna look exactly like the kind of Tudor or mock Tudor buildings that you see around the place. So look at that, for example. That's looking really nice so far. It's nice and clean. It's not too busy. We could even maybe put some, some blocks, some trap doors or something on the window to make it look like window shutters for the upper floor. I think this is going to look fantastic when we're done with it. You might not want to build the entire thing out of wool though, especially if you're running out of wool because wool is actually quite difficult to gather. You have to wait for the sheep to regrow their wool. So it, it, it always takes a little bit of time. So you might even want to break some of the oak wood down into planks and end up using that for some of these sections up here. And that's fine too because planks are a decent building material. <laughs> Obviously, you don't want to build too close to any fires or anything like that, because in, unless you've got the fire spreading mechanic turned off in your world, it is entirely possible to build a house that will just burn down if you're making it out of all of this wood. So you do want to be careful about that. Maybe we'll, we'll fill in this one because there's already a window downstairs. Maybe we'll end up uh, opening this one out instead. Let's get our ax back here, and then let's open out a section here for a larger window. Maybe we'll make this one three or four blocks wide. How about that? Yeah, maybe we'll <laughs> we'll do it this way. We'll put two blocks in there and we'll have a three block wide window centered right in the middle of here. We might even use regular glass blocks for that. That might be might be good. Make it look nice and solid like so. And then let's continue around the build, filling in the rest of these panels. If I've got enough wool, then I might do a couple more wool ones, but we'll probably stick to the smaller ones for that and use wood to fill in the bigger ones just so we can preserve the amount of wool we've got here. And there we go. We've got a nice variety of walls in here, but nothing too over detailed. We've got the wool here with the window panes in there. We've got a wood wall with full glass blocks. We've got a couple of different variations on those. I think overall this is looking really nice so far. I'm going to hop down the stairs here and we can take a look at it from the outside just to make sure we like it before we continue with the rest of the build. And you know what? Yeah, I really like that. I think that's looking good. It's fairly simple compared to some of the other more detailed builds you might have seen elsewhere, but I think it's going to be a really great start. We could even make this window look like it's a little bit more supported by putting a stair in the middle there, kind of like we have done with the the other spots around the build. Let's maybe pop one around the other side just to make that consistent. Lovely stuff. Okay, that's not looking too bad. So I think the last thing we're going to do today, we're not going to worry too much about the interior of it yet. I think we're going to put a roof on this. I think this really needs a roof for it to look complete. 
To make a roof for a larger house like this, something that's more than just a 5x5 wooden box, is going to take quite a lot of resources. We've got a lot of cobblestone, which is a very good start. We will need to make some of this into stairs, I think maybe consolidate the cobblestone we have here, and we'll need a fair amount of wood as well. So I'm gonna break some of that down into planks. We'll probably need some stairs here and there, but I've got a decent amount of stairs right now, but I am out of wood, so we might have to pause in the middle of this so that I can gather a little bit more wood from maybe even this tree or maybe sort of replant a couple of other trees, because I quite like this tree now. It feels like it's becoming part of the landscape, and I sort of want to keep it there right outside the door as a, a reminder that we're still out here in the middle of nature. So let's hop up here. I'm actually going to add another full layer of oak planks here just as a kind of a buffer as a kind of filler layer so that we can place something around the top of the uh the roof line here because i i find that a lot of the time it uh it, it helps to have a bit of an overhang for your roof so what we're going to do is we're going to have the cobblestone stairs as a frame for the roof and kind of hanging over the side but if they hang too low over the windows it can look a little bit awkward so I'm just going to break out the rest of these oak planks here and we might end up replacing this with something else completely later on or even continuing the materials we had in the wall just up one block higher so it looks nice here on the inside of the house but this should do for now we'll just finish off the rest of this and then we're going to start on a roof frame now this is going to be a tricky part of the build, so I'm just going to pop out here with, let's see, a cobblestone block like so. And then we want to have it coming out a little bit further from the, the frame of the house. And what we're gonna have is a kind of peaked roof that peaks in the center above the door, and then we're gonna have it come down on either side. So it's going to be kind of two flat ends of the roof here and here, and then slopes on either side in a kind of triangular shape. So let's make sure that we've got the right proportions here. We want the cobblestone stairs to form a kind of overhang over here like so. And so the roof line is going to come out to about the same place. There's gonna be a little bit of an overhang here which we can fill in later. We're gonna do the same on the outside here as well. We're gonna bring that out here. And so I've settled on a, a very interesting slope design for this roof, but I think it's going to really pay off once we finish building it. I'll, I'll try and explain it as we go on the other side here. I just drafted that one as a quick example to myself. So. If I don't fall off of this thing, I can explain how this works. Okay, here we are. So we're going to start off with this cobblestone stair facing that way. We're gonna place one on the back of it, upside down like that. So it starts the, the shape of the roof kind of going upwards like this. We're going to drop a cobblestone block on top of that, a cobblestone stair on top of that, and then we're going to alternate the stairs upside down and then right way up upside down. And then we start again with the cobblestone block on top of there, the stairs on top of that, upside down, right way up, upside down, cobblestone block. And you just keep going with a pattern like this. So cobblestone stair, upside down, right way up, upside down, cobblestone block. And one last stair there connects it to the top of this roof part here that we've already built. And so when we step off and we head over to this, this tree, you can see it's symmetrical and it kind of looks like a bell shape kind of thing. We're going to go with that. I think this is going to look really nice once we've filled in the rest of the roof material. You'll notice that we're pretty much out of wood at this point, so I will need to start farming a couple more trees off camera. I won't uh, I won't bore you with that because uh, it can be a little bit tedious work and you, you know how to farm trees at this point, guys. You're smart. <laughs> you've, you've seen this all happen before. So we're going to finish off the roof in by making an arch the same size on the opposite side of the house and then I'll show you how to fill it in. Remember that if you're building high up like this, if you want to make sure that you don't walk off the side of a block, you can crouch. You can hold down the crouch key, whether that's shift or on, I'm not sure what it is on other versions on, on the consoles and so forth, but all you need to do is make sure you're crouching and for the most part, you won't fall off a block you're standing on. It, it can look like you're standing out here in the thin air and if you go into third person view, you really are. But since you're still technically standing on the very edge, the very corner of this block, you can look out over the side and not fall down. But make sure you're holding crouch because as soon as you uh, release that, you will end up dropping off and you don't want to fall from this height a lot of the time. That can usually mean you take a lot of damage. So as you can see, I've been doing a little bit of tree farming. I even grew a couple of trees really quickly with some bone meal just to make sure that we could grab a little bit of wood and do the next part of this build. We're going to start off by filling in the 
frames on each side of the house with some more oak planks and oak stairs. What I plan to do is follow the same sort of pattern that we used when we were building the roof, but one block in so that the, the frame really kind of pops out from the edge of the roof. So we're gonna start out just by placing a row of planks all the way along here, like so. We'll hop up on the end here. And then where this stair is inverted, we're going to basically start this pattern, but one block over with the the oak wood. So we're popping an inverted stair on there. We're going to have to fill this bit in just because because uh, <laughs> otherwise it's going to look like there's a bunch of gaps in it from the front. But then we fill in this row with planks and then we do the same thing we've done here with a block on top of that and then oak stairs like so. And then we fill in the gaps in between there and, and we follow the same sort of pattern upwards block there and a stair like so, and then we just fill in all of the rest of this. Now, as you can see, I'm running out of wood again very, very quickly. A lot of these larger builds like this will require you to gather an awful lot of resources. So make sure you've got a tree farm going at all times if you want to build something on this kind of scale, which usually I do because I'm a, I'm a bit of a building fanatic. I do like to build a lot of more interesting looking stuff like this. But if you just want to build a house with a flat roof that's perfect for your needs, then go ahead. There's a lot of different ways to play Minecraft, so I'm not going to uh, to judge anybody's way as being better than anyone else's. But now, as you can see, we've got a nice flat panel of the roof there, and it's inset from the frame in a really, really nice looking way. So what I'm gonna do is gather yet again, an awful lot of wood so that we can finish the rest of this. But the trees are growing at a steady rate at this point. So really all it's gonna be is a matter of time. And now with both ends of the roof filled in, all that's left to do is just follow each block along like so, starting with the stairs here, <laughs> the stairs continuing along there. Oh, and you can place stairs on corners occasionally like that. So you do have to be a little bit careful about where you position them. I find that it's best to just look kind of straight past it and then look a little to the left and then click on the bottom corner of the stair like so. So you have to go along step by step like this. <laughs> you might end up misplacing a couple of blocks like I'm doing here just because I'm probably rushing a little bit at this point. This episode is getting a little bit long, but look at this. We've got ourselves a roof starting to come together and all you need to do is go along, follow whatever block is at the end here and then just keep placing it as you go. Now I'm gonna need that crafting table that's on the other side of there, so I might have to hop over here if I can. Let's see if we can parkour our way up the roof. Oh, we've done it, perfect. Okay, and then I can just hop over the roof on the other side, go to the crafting table, make myself some more stairs, and hopefully I've now gathered enough roof material that I should be able to put together the rest of the roof, no problem, but we'll need a lot of stairs here, so who knows? And at this point, it's probably important to head down here and place a few torches in the room, because otherwise, once the roof covers over, even with the light from the windows, it's gonna become incredibly dark in here and monsters might be able to spawn. So we'll do that quickly before we finish the roof off. But you know what? I think we're probably going to just very quickly get the rest of this done and I'll see you guys when it's all complete. Oh no, I've run out of wood again. I only have this much of the roof left to fill in, but you know what? I'm gonna have to hop down here and get another tree. <laughs> All right, folks, <laughs> we're almost done. Almost done with this build. Looks like a couple of trees have grown down there. Those will be perfect. Okay, everyone, that is the last of the stairs gone in and I'll, I had to make a pillar all the way up to the roof to finish off that last section, but we've done it. And I think we are going to enjoy living in this house right here. I have put a few torches on the inside just to make sure the whole thing is lit up and monsters won't spawn in thin air. They have to spawn on a block, on a solid block. So it looks like, uh, yeah, we should have enough torches in here to make sure nothing appears in here. We'll pop one in the middle of the room just to be safe, but we can step back and take a look at our creation. And this is going to be a fabulous house. This is a, a huge upgrade from the little wooden cabin we had before. And this is what I like to do at the start of every Minecraft world really, is to make a big enormous house that I'm going to be able to use for the rest of my time in that world. Regardless of whether or not I go ahead and build anything else in the world, I will always have a home and it starts with something like this. Now, as I was saying throughout this entire process, this is a pretty big house just because I like to go big right at the start, but you don't have to build something this big as long as it's got the the room for all of the stuff you want to make, all of the stuff you want to put in there. And I'm pretty happy with this place, so we can move our bed in there right now and we're gonna make this thing our new home. And that way we can spawn in here every time we go to sleep. Every time we, we get killed or anything like that, we can reappear here in the bed. Obviously, I can't sleep right now because it's the middle of the day, but once we've slept in that bed, this will be our house kind of permanently, I guess. And this, 
this is really great. I'm super happy with it. And you should always be happy with the stuff that you build if you can possibly manage to be. Let's let's take a quick look around the outside. We could maybe put a couple of little bushes in here and there in the places where I didn't put the cobblestone stairs just to make it look a little bit more like it's, you know, part of the landscape, like it's it's been there for a little while. All of the stuff is growing around. Let's put some bushes over here by the door as well. So leaf blocks are great for use as bushes. They can really help to decorate a house really nicely, like so. We'll pop a couple over here, just in loose little organic shapes like this. Maybe we'll put some just outside of the back door, like that, and around these kind of empty walls like that. And so that is pretty much perfect. I think that's a really nice starter house. <laughs> it's definitely an upgrade, and I'm sure we will enjoy using this as our home for the next few episodes but that is definitely all we've got time for for this episode of the minecraft survival guide thank you so much for watching my name has been pixel riffs leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon bye for now <laughs>